Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome back to the course Corporate Finance. Today's lecture is Leveraged Buyouts. A leveraged buyout, or an LBO, is the acquisition of a company using leverage, using a high amount of debt. One option for an acquisition would be to simply use equity, which wouldn't involve any debt service, but it would require a higher amount of investor capital, whereas by using leverage, and particularly high leverage, an investor can acquire a company with a smaller amount of the investor's capital and work to maximize the leverage of the bank's money. When this happens, as always, there is an increase in risk. Anytime you're using debt, there's more risk. And the more debt you use, the more risk there is. So the high leverage creates a high risk situation, which could potentially result in a failure to meet the debt service payments and ultimately the possibility of bankruptcy. Let's look at an LBO example. This company is triple play. We know their annual cash flows. They currently have no debt. An investor is interested in acquiring the company for $200 million. Their proposal is 60% debt, 40% equity, and the interest rate on debt is 8%. We will disregard the tax effects of interest payments. Usually interest expense is tax deductible, so there's an offset to an interest payment. It reduces your tax bill, not dollar for dollar, but based on the tax rate. For this scenario, we will assume no tax effects relating to interest expense. Question, is this a good strategy? Now we prepare an analysis. We know we have $10 million of operating cash flow and based on the amount that we want to borrow, which is $120 million, and the current interest rate of 8%, the interest payment on the debt would be $9.6 million. Notice that's almost the entire operating cash flow. The debt service coverage, the operating cash flow divided by the interest payment is 1.04. That is a very small, very high risk debt service coverage ratio and the bank would and hopefully the borrower, the investor also would reject this scenario as being too risky. Notice as well the ROE, the return on equity calculation, which is looking at the equity investment after obtaining the debt in relation to the net cash flow after paying debt service. $400,000 of net cash flow per year as a percentage of the $80 million equity investment is less than 1%. So even before looking at the debt service coverage ratio, this doesn't look like an attractive investment. Now if we can get the price down, if we do some negotiating, the same company with the same cash flow and the same debt terms in the market, then this is an attractive transaction and we might be able to get a bank to agree to these terms. So if we negotiate the price down to $80 million, then the debt at the same percentage of the transaction price drops to 48 million at the same interest rate the interest payment drops and now we have significant cash flow the return on equity is much higher a little over 19 percent comparing the cash flow after interest payment to the equity which is the acquisition price after obtaining debt and the debt service coverage is now 2.6 this also isn't very good, but it's much better than 1.04. So perhaps an investor could get a lender to agree to these terms. And if we proceed with the transaction, ultimately we want to look at the life of the transaction, the cash flows, the debt service, the proceeds from selling the investment at the end of the investment period to understand the, the complete result of this leveraged buyout. So now we're looking at the cash flow analysis. We're assuming this is a five year transaction. We'll sell the investment at the end of five years. And notice I have some assumptions on the left side of the screen, the left side of the spreadsheet. We make assumptions that there will be an increase in operating cash flows. We make assumptions about the capital expenditures required each year. The interest payment, the interest is calculated based on the beginning debt balance. It's likely that we'll be 
paying down debt throughout the year, but to simplify the calculations in the model, we'll assume that we calculate the full year interest based on the beginning balance of debt, and we assume that the divestiture price is based on a multiple of the final year operating cash flow of seven times. The operating cash flow in 2021 of about 12.7 million times a multiple of seven gives us a sales price of about $89 million. And when we look at the cash available for debt pay down, notice that in years one through four, we're using all of the cash to pay down the debt. That's generally how an LBO works. The investor doesn't take out any cash flow until the sale of the investment at which point the remaining debt balance is paid down and all additional proceeds go to the investor. Now we discount the fifth year cash flow at a discount rate of 15% and we look at the present value of that, 30, of that $72 million cash flow. The present value is about $36 million. Comparing that to our investment of $32 million, we have a net present value of about $4 million. That's positive. That means we would approve this investment if we feel good about our assumptions. Additionally, note the IRR calculation, which is an Excel or a financial calculator calculation that we won't do in this detail, but I will want you to understand some concepts about the IRR calculation. Notice this is 17.7%. And what you should understand is that when we use a discount rate of 15% and the net present value is greater than zero, that is an indication that the IRR is something greater than 15%. And we see that verified here in the Excel calculation of IRR. 17.7% is greater than the discount rate we apply to 15%, and that's why the NPV is positive. If we were to use the discount rate of 17.7% in this model, then we would end up with a net present value of exactly zero. And let's look in more detail at how we analyze or account for or track our debt. Here in the debt schedule, I show a beginning balance, the debt payment from the annual cash flows, which results in a lower ending balance, and using the loan interest rate, I calculate interest expense for the year. Again, basing that on the beginning balance of the loan and then carrying the ending loan balance forward as the beginning loan balance in the following year and applying the same calculation through to the end of the investment period. Notice that the ending balance is zero. We paid off the remaining balance of the loan based on the proceeds from the sale of the investment. And after paying off the loan, the remaining proceeds went to us, which was the cash inflow that we used to calculate our NPV and our IRR. This concludes the lecture on leverage buyouts. As you can see in our example, there are some involved calculations which we complete in Microsoft Excel. So when we meet in class, we'll see, we'll go into the Excel spreadsheet to see how these calculations work. I will also upload this spreadsheet to the website so you'll have access to the calculations in Excel that are reflected in the PowerPoint that we've worked through together now. So when we meet, you'll have the opportunity to see the analysis in much more detail and that will help you, that will give you a better understanding of the LBO analysis process. I look forward to seeing you in class.